Hello friends. In this session, we are looking at the monetary approach to balance of payment and exchange rate determination. The basic premise of the monetarist approach is that both balance of payment and exchange rates are purely monetary phenomena. That is, they are determined by monetary factors. We will first analyze their argument with respect to balance of payment when both exchange rates are fixed and flexible. Follow up to see how the exchange rates are determined in monetarist school. Welcome to the video. The monetarist approach was started towards the end of 1960s by Robert Mundell and Harry Johnson and become fully developed during 1970s. Now, the monetary approach views balance of payment as a purely monetary phenomenon. And any disequilibrium in balance of payment can be corrected through only monetary measures. That is, money plays a crucial role in long run as a significant disturbance term as well as an adjustment in the country's balance of payment position. And the monetary approach analyzes balance of payment in terms of the monetary factors, namely the demand for money and supply of money. Now let us analyze the assumptions of the model. The monetary approach is based on following simplifying assumption. There is a stable long run money demand function. We are going to see the money demand function. The prices are assumed to be flexible and markets are assumed to be prevailing perfect competition. There is an aggregate vertical supply schedule reflecting full employment, which is a follow up of the perfect competition assumption. There is the prevalence of purchasing power parity theory and the law of fund price. We have already examined the significance of the law of fund price and purchasing power parity theory in one of our earlier session. That is, purchasing power parity theory is said to prevail so that the exchange rate adjusts to the ratio of domestic prices to that of the foreign price level. The output is determined exogenously. Now, following this assumption or given this assumption, we can examine the monetary approach of balance of payment and exchange rate determination in two ways. It analyzes the case of balance of payment when exchange rates are fixed and also when exchange rates are flexible. In both cases, the monetarist believes that there will be an automatic adjustment process. That is, balance of payment disequilibriums will be automatically corrected by the market itself without any intervention from the part of the monetary authority. We will start from the argument of the monetarist when exchange rates are fixed. Under fixed exchange rate system, the demand for money function MD is assumed to be positively related to level of nominal national income and is stable in long run as per the assumption. The monetary approach used the quantity theory of money to form its demand function, demand for money function, where MD is equal to K into P into Y, where MD is the demand for money, P is the domestic price level, Y is the national income or national output. K is the parameter that measures the sensitivity of money demand to changes in income. Or in other words, K is the reciprocal of velocity of circulation. We all know that velocity of circulation is the average number of times one unit of money changes from one hand to another. But in the model, both V as well as K is assumed to be constant. So, we have a demand for money function MD, which is a stable and a positive function to domestic price level and income. Moving to the supply function, money supply MS is equal to M into D plus F, where small letter M represent the money multiplier. But money multiplier is assumed to be fixed here. So, money supply composed of two things. One is the D, the other is F. D is the domestic component of the money supply. D is, in fact, the domestic credit by the country's monetary authorities or it is the domestic asset backings in the country's money supply. 
F, which is his foreign component money supply, represent the foreign exchange reserves in the country. So money supply equals D plus F. And this D plus F is nothing but the monetary base of the country or what is known as the high powered money. The monetary approach believes that there will always be equilibrium between demand for money and supply of money. MD will be equal to MS. Whenever there are changes in the demand for money and supply of money, there will be automatic forces in the economy that will tend to correct it towards the equilibrium. Now let us assume that a situation when there is an increase in the demand for money. MD increases, MS must increase to compensate the increased demand. We know that MS is equal to D plus F, that is either D or F must increase. If government or the monetary authorities do not increase the domestic component D, the monetarist argues that the excess demand for money will be automatically satisfied by an increase in F or a surplus in country's balance of payment. On the other hand, if there is an increase in the D, that is monetary authorities increase money supply without any corresponding changes in the demand for money. That is, demand, of, demand for money remains unchanged. If the monetary authorities increase domestic component of money supply, then money will flow out of the country, will leading to a fall in F and a deficit in country's balance of payment. In other words, a surplus in country's balance of payment will result from an excess stock of money demanded which are not satisfied by the monetary authorities. On the other hand, a deficit in balance of payment results from an excess in the stock of money supplied which is not corrected by the country's monetary authority. In either cases, in either the demand surplus or in the deficit of balance of payment, both will be temporary and it will be self-correcting in nature. That is, when exchange rates are fixed, the country has no control over the money supply under fixed exchange rate system in the long run. It will automatically take place by the inflow or outflow of the money. Now let us shift our focus to the situation where we have the exchange rate flexibility. That is, monetary approach to balance of payment under flexible exchange rate system. Under flexible exchange rate system, the balance of payment disequilibriums are corrected through automatic changes in exchange rate and corresponding changes in the price level without any changes or without anything called the flow of money. That is, without inflow or outflow of money, the balance of payment disequilibriums will be corrected through the changes in prices and the corresponding changes in the exchange rate. And unlike the fixed exchange rate system, the country do have a control over con the, its mon money supply in monetary policy under the flexible exchange rate system according to the monetarist. That is, the adjustment takes place as a result of change in domestic prices that accompanies the change in the exchange rate. Now, a deficit in balance of payment will result from excess money supply, will lead to an automatic depreciation of country's currency, which causes domestic prices to rise, there will be an increase in demand for money and it will be automatically corrected. That is, the demand for money will sufficiently absorb the excess supply of money so that it will eliminate the balance of payment deficit. So corrections are automatic in the sense that whenever there is, there is a change in the prices, it results into change in the uh, demand for money and it will result to resettlement of the equilibrium. On the other hand, a surplus of imbalance of payment resulting in the excess demand for money automatically, it will lead to an appreciation of currency. This will lead to a reduction in domestic prices, eliminating the excess demand. When there is a decline in prices, then demand for money will decline as well. So eliminating the excess demand for money balance and balance of payment surplus will be eliminated, retaining the equilibrium in balance of payment. So under flexible exchange rate system, the equilibrium is retained through changes in price level as well as corresponding changes in the exchange rate. The currency depreciation can result from the excessive money supply as well as appreciation can result from inadequate money growth in the country. 
so a country facing consistently inflationary pressure or there is an increase in money supply or relative money supply is greater in the country it tends to face a depreciation of its currency or its exchange rate might be increasing now let us analyze the same case with respect to a figure we have a situation in which the x axis we will measure the relative supply of money in india for example and we have a rupee versus dollar exchange rate is measured on the vertical axis we have an oc curve that shows the relationship between money supply in india relative to that of the money supply in the united states and the rupee versus dollar exchange rate we can see that as money supply in india or relative money supply in india rises from s1 to s2 there is an increase in exchange rate from r1 to r2 that is as relative money supply in india increases there is an increase in exchange rate or a depreciation of indian rupee that is when country faces inflationary pressures our currency tends to depreciate as well according to the monetary approach now we will shift our focus to the exchange rate determination so far we have analyzed the monetarist argument about the balance of payment now we are focusing about how exchange rates are determined under the monetarist school now an equation for the demand for money we have already derived which is equal to md is equal to k into p into y since exchange rate is price of one currency in terms of another we have to derive the demand for money equation for the foreign country as well which is equal to md star is equal to k star p star y star while k star p star y star uh, corresponds to the price level as well as re real income in the foreign country we have the exchange rate determination on the basis of purchasing power parity theory and we have already know that purchasing power parity theory the exchange rate re is considered as a ratio between domestic price level and foreign price level re is equal to p by p star according to the purchasing power parity theory and law of one price in equilibrium money demand will be equal to money supply in both the country so that we have ms equals md in the domestic country as well as ms star equals md star in the foreign country as well now substituting the value for md and md star here we will have ms is equal to k into p into y and ms star is equal to k star p star y star substituting this equation and dividing these two we will have the equation something like this ms equals ms divided by ms star equals kpy divided by k star p star y star we already know that p by p star is equal to r so substituting the value r for p by p star this equation will become ms by ms star equals k into r into y divided by k star y star solving for r r is the exchange rate solving for r and slight adjustment with the equation we will have r exchange rate equals ms by ms star divided by ky by k star y star that is exchange rate equals relative money supply divided by relative demand for money exchange rate is determined by the relative supply of money and relative demand for money in different countries an increase in the domestic money stock or money supply related to that of foreign money supply will lead to an exchange rate depreciation or a depreciation of the domestic currency on the other hand if ky increases that is when y increase demand for money will increase when an increase in domestic income related to that of foreign income will lead to a reduction in the exchange rate or an appreciation of ho home currency that is exchange rate equals relative supply of money divided by relative demand for money this is what our earlier argument as far as monetarist is concerned monetary school believes that the exchange rate and balance of payment are purely monetary phenomenon they are determined by the monetary factors and we found out that the exchange rate equals a relative demand for money as well as a relative supply of money this is the key argument as far as monetarist school is concerned the obvious limitation of the monetarist approach is that the underlying assumptions like law of one price the purchasing power parity theory perfectly competitive market full employment etc are unrealistic further the model solely focuses on the sole financial asset namely money 
and ignored other financial assets. These issues are taken up by the subsequent approach known as the asset market model or portfolio balance approach which will be the theme of our next session. Hope that this video is useful to you. You can always visit our blog www.skpeco.blogspot.in. Until next time, stay safe, happy learning, thank you.